Mr. Speaker, once again, government, we see that the opposition has two problems with our case today. Number one, whether uh, basically whether or not uh, the oil or resources per se can be split up equally. Secondly, whether or not it will uh, uh, basically the fact that uh, or well the assumption that basically it will lead to further dissent and it will lead to other Muslim countries in the region getting involved. But let me tackle the first one in the first place. Basically, what they have told us is that. These people are, these insurgents are violent because of the fact that they can't get along about the oil. But we have put forth to you that basically all pipelines run through all three, uh, all three areas in Iraq. And what this means is that when one, uh, when one group has the oil, so to speak, it doesn't mean that they have the means to export that oil because they need to use the oil pipelines which run through the rest of the country. In so doing, they basically have to have amicable ties with the rest of the country because of the fact that if they do not have the means to distribute their oil, they do not get any money. That is the bottom line. And when this happens, and when basically they do not have the available means to distribute their oil, they cannot get the benefits, which means nobody gets the benefits. And and basically, um, what splitting up this resource means is that each area has governance over a certain part of the resource. And that means that basically everybody gets benefits, so to speak. So, whatever it may be, it could be that the money gained from distributing this oil be split equally among the three areas. That is perfectly fine as well. And that, that basically, um, no, sit down. Basically, right, um, they're talking about the fact that now, in current status quo, that they are fighting over oil. But I put forth to you, Mr. Speaker, that they are fighting over oil now because they can. Because, so to speak, Iraq is considered one country, and basically this is all fair game. Because they are considered Iraqi citizens, and they can just go over there and shoot, and shoot off some rifles and steal them all. Now, this is perfectly acceptable to them now, because they are all considered one country. But when you split that up, you basically say one jurisdiction, two jurisdictions, three jurisdictions, and basically they do not mix with each other, and basically they cannot cross over, over into all rich territories on their own without basically any... Um, form of legitimate uh, restriction. But before I move on, yes, Asha. We must concede that there will be increased paranoia over excess oil resources given that now one or two groups will have no physical jurisdiction over that oil resources. Now, given paranoia already exists, given they already don't know what's happening to their oil, but consider the fact that while you do not control the oil, you control the means by which their oil gets to somebody else. You control the means by which their oil is of value. And that is definitely something of value to the people in the other territories, be it whether or not they have the oil in presence. But, what was, but now, let's talk about their second issue, where they have an issue of basically talking about the fact that um, other countries which are Saudi Arabia majority Sunni, Iran major, majority Shiite, and Turkey, uh, and Turkey with the Kurd rebels. Now, basically, they, what, what opposition has come out and said is that they will support their own factions. We see, ladies and gentlemen, that there's nothing wrong with them supporting their own kind, supporting the now split up uh, regions, but they will, but in this case, because of my first point in which I have shown how basically the oil can be distributed and can be um, split up equally and the resources and the benefits can be split up equally we are talking about the fact that basically these people do not have a reason to intervene because of the fact that now everybody is getting something equal and these people are saying okay my brother is getting the same as his brother and so in that case we do not have to fight because everybody is getting the same thing and in that case ladies and gentlemen we see that what we are in fact doing is we are making the Middle East a more peaceful place because now everybody seems to come to a consensus and everybody seems to get the same thing and basically ladies and gentlemen um, as I said earlier, they have no right to intervene. They, they have no reason to intervene. But what have we shown you now on the side of the government today? Basically, we have shown you that on the first point, that separation is something that is natural, something that happens whenever these, uh, whenever people um, 
of different ideologies, of different groups, of different ideas come together, they conflict and basically what they do is they live in different areas. We have seen it in Singapore where initially when the government in Singapore was set up under the British that people were put in different areas because they were different. And what we see ladies and gentlemen is it is perfectly normal to split somebody up because he is not like someone else and he is reasonable, uh, uh, well not reasonable but he is he, he, he has the ability to cause some damage to that person and that person to him. We see that when somebody has, uh, when, when violence is possible, when violence is in fact imminent, that splitting up somebody, uh, splitting up a group of people is in fact the right thing to do because you limit their ability to do something to each other. Now, we have also shown you um, in the second point that we are basically removing an excuse to fight because now we are saying that now this is your territory, that is his territory, and that is that guy's territory. Basically, what we are doing is we are splitting them up because number one, they cannot get along. Pretty much that's the entire reason. And number two, now when they have jurisdiction over their own resources, when they have jurisdiction over their own facets of the oil trade, which is so um, basically uh, fundamental to Iraq, what we see is that they each have their own governance and they each have a share of the pie. Now, thirdly, we have shown you the benefits First of all, for Iraq, and second of all, for neighboring Muslim countries, in um, basically uh, with respect to Turkey. Now we're talking about the fact that for Iraq, we ask, uh, we are giving everybody a share of the pie. We are basically splitting it up and making them happy because now they have their own region, they have their own governance, and basically they have their own sort of responsibility and they have their own jurisdiction. Second of all, we are showing you that in neighboring Muslim countries such as Turkey, when Kurds from Iraq who don't feel wanted, who don't feel appreciated, go over there, basically they're getting their exact same treatment but they're doing it through illegal means, which basically means they don't get any rights, they don't um, they don't get any employment and then what happens in the end is they resort to crime and they resort to um, things which degrade their, uh, which degrade another country's uh, fabric of society and we say that is wrong and we say that when you give the Kurds their own property basically they have a reason to stay and they have a reason to not go mess up somebody else's country we believe on these three points on the fact that there is natural to serve, there is natural to separate on the fact that we are removing the uh, excuse to fight and all the benefits that we have shown on being able to split up the oil equally and to split up the resources equally we beg to propose okay.